Good morning and welcome to Tuesday of Holy Week. Our service for today will be from our LBW, the Lutheran Book of Worship, the Service of the Word, on page 162 if you have your hymn book. Let us begin. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, and the God of all consolation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord for mercy, to one God who is generous and forgiving. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive bread and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, and the God of all consolation. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now proceed with our Old Testament canticle, Listen, You Nations. Listen, you nations of the world, Listen to the word of the Lord. Announce it from coast to coast. Declare it to distant islands. The Lord who scatters Israel will gather his people again. And he will keep watch over them as a shepherd watches his flock. What droughts of joy they will come, their faces radiant and happy. For the Lord is so generous there, he showers his people with gifts. Listen, you nations of the world, listen to the word of the Lord. Announce it from coast to coast, declare it to distant islands. Young women will dance for joy, and men, young and old, will make merry. Like a garden refreshed by the rain, they will never be in want again. Break into shouts of great joy, Jacob is free again. Teach nations to sing the song, the Lord has saved his people. Listen, you nations of the world, listen to the word of the Lord. Announce it from coast to coast, declare it to distant islands. And the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, as we now embark upon this Holy Week, as we hear the words of Jesus in the temple, and for the Greeks who have sought to seek him, may we too, O oh Lord, seek your face, and to know you, and to hear the voice from heaven, glorifying your Son's name. We ask these things in Jesus Christ, our Holy Son, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading for this day 
comes from Paul's letter to the first Corinthians, the first chapter beginning at the 18th verse. Paul writes, For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Greeks. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful, and not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in this world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God, for he is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And our psalm for today is from Psalm 71, verse 1 through 14. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. For in your righteousness deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have learned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me, and those who watch for my life consult together. They say, pursue and seize that person whom God has forsaken, for there is no one to deliver. O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Let my accusers be put to shame and consumed. Let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. But I will hope continually, and will praise you yet more and more. And our Gospel reading for today comes from the 12th chapter of St. John's Gospel, beginning at the 20th verse. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. And others said, no, an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, Well, we heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you still have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you're going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. The Gospel of our Lord. Sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As you remember from yesterday's video on Holy Monday, we had the story of Mary wiping Jesus' feet with her hair and Judas protesting because of the fact that his money was wasted. Now and today, Jesus is walking around the temple. And there was a group of Greeks, probably Greek proselytes. Those were people who were not born of ethnic Jewish Judaism, but instead were converts. And they had the same privileges as one who was born Jewish. One did it become, you went through a serious process to become Jewish. And these Greeks wanted to see Jesus. They probably heard about Jesus from the other pilgrims. And they wanted to see him. For the Greeks loved to talk about philosophy and reasoning. And so they asked Philip. Philip is actually a Greek name. So it's understandable to see why they would ask someone named Philip. Because Philip being a Greek name would probably have something very in common. Well then Greek, then Philip went to Andrew. Because Andrew was the first disciple that Jesus called. And also Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist earlier. And so they brought the Greeks and they told Jesus. And it's interesting because the Greeks never got to ask Jesus a single question in his whole dialogue. They were the ones who wanted to see Jesus and probably wanted to ask him some certain questions and yet Jesus dominated the whole conversation about himself. He didn't even let the Greeks have a chance to say anything. I don't know if you think they might have been disappointed with that. Or if they thought, wow, here's a celebrity who's really stuck on himself. Always talking about him. But Jesus was trying to make a point that Paul brings up then in his letter in 1 Corinthians. And in fact, in this gospel lesson, we see the entire background of Paul's letter very perfectly. For he said, the Jews demand signs and the Greeks desire wisdom. The Jews later on in the gospel lesson said, well, we know from the law that the Messiah never died. How can you say that this Son of Man must be lifted up? They were challenging Jesus' point. 
They said, well, according to the law, the Messiah will not die. How can you say, if you say that you are God's son, how dare you say that he must? Are you greater than the law? Is what they were asking Jesus. Was Jesus greater than the very law that God gave to them on Mount Sinai through Moses? And the Greeks that were coming wanted to probably talk with him about reasoning. They probably wanted him to lay out the foundation of his theology, of the Christology and the Sorotology or the Episcopatology of the whole realm of what he is talking about. But Jesus says only one thing. For this very hour I came is for the reason that I was born. Should I ask my father to save me from this hour? No, because I was here for this hour. It was the very reason that I came into this world as a little baby for this hour. And he says, Father, glorify your name. And the voice from heaven. This is the third time that we hear the voice of God from heaven in the, in the scriptures. The first one, of course, was at John the Baptist when baptizing Jesus in the River Jordan. Remember what God said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And then at the transfiguration, when Peter, James, and John were flat-faced on the ground, the cloud came over Jesus at the transfiguration and said, the voice came from heaven again, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. And now for the last time, before the last supper, God glorifies the name one more time. But Jesus said it wasn't for his sake. It was for the sake of you around him to hear that voice. Because Jesus knew what he had to do. And it's interesting because Jesus couldn't have made it any plainer to the people, to the disciples that were around him, to the crowds that were around him, even to the Greeks that were around him. He couldn't have made it any simpler. When I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus said the same thing back in the beginning of the Gospel of John, in John chapter 3, when he was meeting Nicodemus in the garden at night, Jesus told Nicodemus that just as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up also, so that all who believe in him will not perish. And then we get the famous verses of John 3.16 and 3.17. Jesus, at the very cusp of the Last Supper, tells the crowd the same thing. When I am lifted up from the earth, he didn't say when I am lifted up outside of Jerusalem just for you people. He didn't say when I am lifted up just for those that are living in good economic situations or those who have enough faith. Jesus didn't say it that way. Instead, Jesus said, when I am lifted up from the earth, all of the earth, I will draw all people to myself. All people, black, white, red, brown, green, gold, purple. Doesn't matter what color of your skin. Doesn't matter your economic status doesn't matter even of what faith you are, doesn't matter what you believe. Jesus Christ is lifted up from the earth to draw the entire realm of humanity to himself because there is only one name under heaven which we can be saved and that was at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ who died for our sins that we should have so been accepted of the judgment for we are sinners and cannot escape the judgment. 
but because of God's love for us, Christ accepted our punishment and gave himself as a sacrifice for all. Not just for the few, but for all humanity from past, present, and time beyond. We are so surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses around us from all the centuries past who have believed in this faith and can testify and through their words and deeds and actions of what Christ has meant to them. Because they came to the foot of the cross when Christ was lifted up. All we need to do is turn our eyes upon Jesus and say, Lord, you have my all. I can never repay you for the sacrifice you gave me. But I give myself to you. For that's all I have. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are worthy to be held in reverence by all the mortal race. We give you thanks for the innumerable blessings which, despite our unworthiness, you have showered upon us. We praise you especially that you have preserved for us in your purity your saving word and the sacred ordinances of your church. Grant and preserve to your church throughout the world the purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach your word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and firmly to believe your word of truth. Protect and defend your people in time of tribulation and danger, that we who in communion with your church and in unity with all Christian people may fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the fullness of salvation. Upon all the nations of the earth bestow your grace, Especially we ask you to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause your glory to dwell among them and let mercy and truth, justice and peace everywhere prevail. We commend to your care all our schools that virtue and useful knowledge may be nourished and the wholesome fruits of life may abound. In your mercy defend us from all calamities by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper all who labor and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Show yourself to be a helper of the sick and the needy, the comforter of the forsaken in distress. Accept, we pray, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together as we gift as our offering of praise. And so we as strangers and pilgrims on earth help us to prepare for the world to come, doing the work which you have given us to do while it is day before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by your power and receive us into your everlasting kingdom where with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign forever. And as our Lord taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we have our New Testament canticle, which is number 13 in our book. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He 
is joy for all ages. <coughs> if we die with the Lord, we shall live with the Lord. If we endure with the Lord, we shall live with the Lord. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. In Him all our sorrows, in Him all our joys, in Him hopes of glory, in Him In Him all our grace, in Him our salvation, in Him all our peace. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. Deed is our saving Lord, He is joy. For all ages. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine on to us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.